Let's introduce what we mean by a polar coordinate, as well as give the relationship between Cartesian or rectangular coordinates x and y, and what we're talking about in terms of polar coordinates r and theta. So in this video, we're going to introduce a new coordinate system entirely. And I just want to first motivate why one person may be interested in doing that. So for example, we live in a solar system where the sun is the center of our solar system and we're all or and we're all existing on a planet that is orbiting the sun. So these blue dots here you can think of as planets. And they're not drawn to scale or anything like that. But these planets are effectively orbiting the sun going around circle and circle. And well, we could describe the position of any of these planets using an xy coordinate, but one that might be a little more attractive to use would be what happens if we just place ourselves right at the center of our solar system. So for example, what if we're just sitting at the sun and we just say, okay, well, this planet that planet is some specific distance away from us. And if I want to describe the location of that planet over time, well, I know that planet has a specific distance away. And the other thing I would need to describe is, well, how can I tell us where it is in terms of us? If we're thinking about a clock, is this thing straight up? Are we straight down? Are we to the right? Are we to the left? And we can start envisioning, well, you know what? What if we just defined some angle off of a horizontal and talked about this as a possible coordinate system? So no longer do we have to be constrained to working in a rectangular X and Y, but we can describe R, which is the distance from the center. And some angle that we can call theta, which is an angle off of the horizontal axes. And with those two bits of information, the distance something is away from me, as well as the angle off of the axes it is, we could describe any point in space. So hopefully that motivates why a person may want to care about other coordinate systems. It's easier basically just to point at something. In this case, we're sitting at the sun, we're pointing at a planet. We know the distance it is away. We just have to figure out an angle in, with respect to something else to define that particular location. All right, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start off with what we know. And what we've been working with for years is this rectangular or Cartesian reference system. And in this Cartesian coordinate system, we know we have X and Y. So we have the Y vertical axes, we have X the horizontal axes. And if we define any point on the XY plane, well, we know that point is composed of some X value and some y value. So this point we would say is xy equals ab. Again, we're at distance a from the y-axis, and we're at distance b from the x-axis. So we're very much marching over a distance a, and then marching upwards a distance y or B. So where we're going today is defining what we're calling a polar coordinate system. So if we take the same exact XY plane, and we're going to, again, this is the XY plane, so we have our X and Ys, we're going to toss into this plane that same point. So that is the same exact point we had before. This is A comma B. <laughs> and instead of writing this as a very rectangular coordinate, we're going to define this as instead a coordinate based from the origin. So if this 
is a distance, if this point is a distance r away from the origin. The other thing we need, well, that's just the angle coming off of the x-axis. So this point written in Cartesian form was x and y. This point we could equally write using polar coordinates, however. So just so we're on the same page, what we're effectively saying is, you know what, we can still move over a distance x and up a distance y to get to that point. And what we're starting to see is, well, we're getting this relationship of a right triangle. We can relate our r and theta to an x and y value. And we're actually going to go ahead and do that next. So again, we're on the xy plane. We have our point that's somewhere in the plane, and we have a couple different ways to measure this point. We have the one method in which we're using polar coordinates, which we're saying that point is a distance r away from the origin at an angle theta off the x-axis. We also have this other way to view it, where this point is a distance x along the horizontal and a distance y along the vertical. So we can actually go ahead and extract this because what we really have is a right triangle. We have a right triangle where the opposite side is y, the adjacent side is x, the hypotenuse is labeled r, and that angle, that is our theta. So we can actually figure out how to go back and forth between Cartesian and polar coordinates just by using right triangle relationships. So for example, if we're given a coordinate in terms of x and y, and we want to go into the r theta coordinates, well, we can figure out how to do that. We know that by Pythagorean theorem, we have that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we can get r squared, or we can get r for that matter, just by using Pythagorean theorem from our triangle. The way in which we can get theta, well, just using other right triangle relationships, we know that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. So in other words, if we take the arctan of both sides, we can get that theta is equal to the arctangent, or the inverse tan, of y over x. And similarly, if we solve for r by itself, we will get that r is equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. In, in the next video, we'll discuss what it means actually to have a negative r value. It is actually plausible, and we'll get into that in the future. But we have our method for going from xy coordinates into polar coordinates. Again, we're just able to use Pythagorean theorem and some right triangle relationships. So what happens if we go the opposite way? If we're given a point in polar coordinates and we want to go into the xy coordinates. Well, we can try to use some other right triangle relationships. For example, we know that cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case is x over r. 
And since what we want to know is what x and y are in terms of r and theta, we can go ahead and solve this for x. And we get that x is equal to r cosine. And we can do something similar for y. Instead of looking at cosine, we can look for sine. And sine just gives us, well, opposite over hypotenuse. And then solving for y, since we want to know what y is in terms of r and theta, we get y is equal to r sine theta. So we have two situations now. The second situation, we're given a point in polar coordinates, and we can get the identical, or I shouldn't say identical, but the other version of this point written in Cartesian coordinates. And the first thing we did was start off with a point in Cartesian coordinates, or rectangular coordinates, x and y, and then go to polar coordinates, r and theta. And all of these relationships we found between r and theta and x and y we're able just to use what we know from right triangles. So right triangles here are really saving the day. And the way in which I think about these types of coordinate transformations or coordinate relationships is kind of like a currency exchange. We have the currency in R and theta coordinates and we wanna know what that's identical to in Cartesian rectangular coordinates X and Y.